And so, okay, so focusing on the, on the brand then, if you're a brand looking to get into, into this, uh, reach out, to, you know, know your customer persona, reach out to people who, you know, have any level of following, necess- maybe, you know, uh, b- basically that can can portray your message with some influence, basically, and then look for a lift, basically look for a lift after that once once that goes out. For sure, because there's a lot of strategies where you can just go really blanketed effect where a lot of low followers, but a lot of content, right? And then we'll see, okay, let's push it out and see, like, on this day we're launching, let's see what the lift is going to be. Yeah. And then you can split test that against someone who has one or two people that have massive followings. And then you can see the difference of traffic, right? You can try to control as many variables as possible, but you can start seeing the trends of, like, okay, all these girls posting at these times, lower traf- uh, lower followers, but then together it was great traffic versus these select massive following, not as good traffic, vice versa, right? Different yeah. ways of that. But so that, that's just... Sorry, go ahead. That's just only looking at it on Instagram, right? Like the thing that we are looking to leverage is themed pages, but on Facebook, the opportunity on Facebook is so much bigger because you can put real dollars behind it or, or not that much dollars behind it and get understandings immediately based upon that post on their page. Let it sit. It's going to acquire its organic love. And then you put your media dollars behind it. It's just going to look so much more organic. And I just went through this with uh, a pet niche brand, right? We just went through leveraging the page i love dogs obviously those people who love those that page is loves dogs so i'm going to leverage that as much as possible and it was i've never seen a return like this yes we put good ad dollars behind it so we had really good learnings but that relationship is so strong now that we are going to go back to them any single time we have a dog product to launch interesting what here's a here's a technical what, what happens with the audiences do those stay siloed when you work from client to client in the influencer space or is there an agreement to be able to share like, yeah, because it's always, it's, you don't want to share email lists. You never, people are never sharing email lists, but I'm wondering when it comes to like building an, an audience, does that, how does that work? That's a great question. I, I think as an agency, I would have to ask, it's more of a permission thing because yeah, yeah. use it as like, that's my secret weapon. Is that like my secret audience? I, it gets kind of touchy there. Like audiences go down to like importing a customer list and getting a lookalike. Now that lookalike might be very strong. I don't technically think I can share that with a similar brand. Yeah. Now, to me, I don't think it's an issue because it's an audience that might resonate better or worse with a different product, right? It's case by case. So I really think it's it's like, oh, I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, what are my expectations? And it's never exclusive either. Like just because one is showing doesn't mean the other one wouldn't necessarily. So it's not like uh, it's it's yeah, and, and it's in a feed that's always changing. And yeah, always refreshing. Exactly. So I don't, I don't see it as being as much of an issue as, as say, an email I, address, for instance. I agree. I don't think it's – you're not, like, taking anything proprietary. You're not owning something. I'm yeah. sure people would argue about that. So we'll, we'll definitely hear about it in the comments. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so what about, what about people running e-commerce stores and things like – and things like at what point in an e-commerce person's journey should they be – 